Some ask me what would I do if I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Nothing good, I'm sure. I am Mark Elliott Schwabe, steam smith. My interest in metals began as a young person at age 14. My dad, James Schwabe, was an artist and jewelry designer whose principal customer was Cartier of New York. Very high quality gold and silver jewelry and small scale sculpture. I began making things out of metal uh, in, in my dad's studio. I, I was doing finishing work on his pieces. And then he suggested, asked me if I would please take a horse that he had made and modify it for, for different use. So changing the positions of the legs. Uh, so that was really my first introduction to sort of making something of my own. A number of years ago, I had an opportunity to do uh, make, make original sculptings for a licensed product, a product licensed by uh, Star Wars and, and Star Trek. So I was making original sculptings small scale, about the same size as my steampunk items, maybe a little bigger. And I had an opportunity to make the Millennium Falcon in three different sizes, an X-Wing fighter in two different sizes, an Enterprise 1701, Enterprise 1701A, Enterprise 1701D, and Enterprise 1701E. <laughs> so uh, the Ferengi Marauder and, and um, uh, probably the, the most spectacular was the Deep Space Nine space station, which I made fairly large, about eight and a half inches, limited edition, uh, possibly in your collection. thing just came very close to its melting point. So then I looked, looked more into steampunk, and wow, I mean, complete freedom of expression. Pretty much any direction you wanted to go in within a very broad framework of Victorian fashion and Victorian technologies with heaping doses of science fiction, time travel, um, airships, steam-powered airships dominating the skies. Just, just the, the freedom of expression in the genre is amazing, and, and the expression, it's, it, is, it is a genre. It's, it's literature, it's film, it's um, art, it's jewelry, it's fashion. I enjoy it a lot when other people respond to my work, and um, uh, and I get a lot of positive responses from the steampunk work, and it's really nice to see other people entertained. Sometimes when I go to a convention, I'll see people who were purchased from me in the past, and, and they'll walk past my table and they'll, they'll point to you know, something that they bought from me before, because they acknowledge, uh, it's, it's almost like we've developed a relationship, which is kind of fun. 
So far, I haven't been able to fully support myself with my steampunk art. So I'm still making some other product that I made, uh, started making a number of years before I started steampunk art. And it's fun stuff. It's not, um, it's not as uh, um, detailed, not as um, witty, if you will, as a uh, as steampunk product. Not as dear to my heart as the steampunk product. But it's fun. Uh, it's um, a line of pewter uh, figures and symbols um, to which pennies are attached and they're lottery ticket scratchers. So that's, um, that's still a good piece of my income. Although I, I long for the day when all my income is from steampunk. So what I hope to do when I grow up is not a whole lot different than what I'm doing now. I, I would like to be an artist. I'd like to uh, make the kind of work I'm making now. So if I had a market that would um, sustain me making larger, more involved pieces, small scale sculptures and large pieces of jewelry. Um, that's really where I'd like to go and, and really kind of the ultimate. There are lots of different ways to define what it is to be an artist. I think more than anything else, or certainly as much as anything else, it's a compulsion. Uh, re really an addiction. Once you have become an artist, once, once you've been making things long enough that the, the thing, it's, it starts, there starts to be a blur between the thing and yourself. Um, it's just compulsive that you must keep making things. There's actually no choice. <laughs>